Good afternoon. My name is Balja Dorji, but most people know me as Tasha Benji. I'm sitting here with my five-year-old grandson. Hi. And I'm going to read him a book written by his grandmother called An Egg in the Orchard, illustrated by Tashi and Ogen. I hope that you'll enjoy reading this book with us. I'm going to read your book this afternoon called The Egg in the Orchard. And it's a story written by your grandmother, Louise Dorji. Look at this egg. Isn't that a nice book? And here we've got this, the apple trees and a nice house. And we have this little girl with her dog. Her name is Dickie. Dickie was in the orchard behind her house looking for her lost hairband. She saw the hairband in the grass under an apple tree. There was something very strange in the grass as well. What do you think she saw? An egg. An egg, that's right. It was a large egg and it was green. I wonder what it is. She picked up the egg carefully and carried it into the house. And there, that night, Dickie wrapped the egg in a blanket and put it into a box next to her bed. While she was sleeping, the egg began to crack open. The cracks became wide, wider, and wider. And can you guess what came out of the egg? Dragon. Yeah. It's a little dragon. When Dickie woke up, he was sitting on her bed. She stared at him, her mouth dropping open. But, but you're a dragon, she said. The dragon didn't say anything. Guess why? Because he can't talk, can he? Yes. <laughs> oh, anyway, Dickie's not scared. Dickie dressed quickly and told the dragon to stay quiet while she went for breakfast. I'll bring some for you too, she promised. While she was away, the little dragon explored the room. First she looked in the mirror and thought there was another little dragon. Then he sniffed some flowers, which made him sneeze. How does sneeze go? Choo! Yes, choo! Okay. Sending out a shower of rainbow-colored sparks. When Dickie came back with a dish of milk and apples, the little dragon ate it all up. And now I have got to go to school, said Dickie. The dragon climbed into a school bag with just the tip of his nose sticking out. Where's this, where's this dragon? Can you see the dragon? Oh, there he is. This is Dickie is a lucky girl, isn't she? She's allowed to take a dragon to school. And when they reached the school, Dickie saw that the dragon had grown bigger. He followed her into the classroom. Hello, we have a new pupil, said the teacher. What is your name, she asked, looking over her spectacles. Just then, a fly landed on the dragon's nose and made him sneeze a shower of colored sparks. His name is Sparky, said Dickie. Sparky grew bigger and bigger and bigger! How oh, big! A very colorful dragon too, isn't he? All the colors of the rainbow. Okay. By the next day, Sparky was bigger still. And he discovered he could fly. Dickie climbed on his back and he flew to school, flapping his rainbow sparkling wings. And then at school break time, Sparky gave all the children rides on his back. They laughed and waved as he flew high above the schoolyard. Sparky was a very kind dragon. Now he had grown so big that father, mother, Dickie, her small brother, 
and sisters well, and as well as grandma, and the dog could all fit comfortably on his back. The next day, the problem began. Oh, she was a problem, no? It, the dog, the, the dragon was too big. Couldn't yeah. At school, the teacher peered through her thick spectacles and said, Sparky, dear, you are too big for this school now. You must move on to another. <laughs> when Dickie and Sparky reached home that afternoon, Mother was looking worried. Sparky's favorite apples are nearly finished, and our cow is refusing to give any more extra milk, she said. I don't know what Sparky can eat now. The problems continued the next day. Grandmother complained that whenever Sparky sneezed, the sparks burnt holes in the curtains and the furniture. Well, dragons get fire, no? Whenever he coughs, something catches on fire, she complained. Look at that. At bed, all the family members started to grumble. <laughs> they were grumbling that nobody could get enough sleep because Sparky snored so loudly that all the windows and doors rattled. Ah, oh, poor Dickie, she's feeling very sad, no? So meanwhile, out in the forest and the orchard, somebody very big indeed was searching for her lost egg. Who do you think it was? Mummy Dragon! All the family members were outside the house. They looked up and saw a huge dragon. That's a big one, huh? And we thought little Sparky was big. Everyone took a hasty step back except Dickie and Sparky, who gave a surprise squeak. The dragon lured ahead and sniffed Sparky. He rubbed his head against her chest. The two dragons turned to leave, but Sparky stopped and looked back at Dickie. He took a step towards her, paused, then blew out a cloud of pink and silver sparks. Then he followed his mother up into the sky, and the family watched as the two dragons flew away, way above the orchard. Goodbye, Sparky, whispered Dickie. I'll miss you. Now, whenever Dickie sees a rainbow in the sky, she thinks of Sparky and his beautiful sparkling wings. That's a nice story, wasn't it? Did you like the story? Yes. Yeah. The end. <laughs>